say two things about us. We are uh, civil society people. We work since 2019 from Panama and Colombia, just some millstones. We met the first time in a Play the Game conference in 2019, thanks to the UK-based organization, I Trust. So we create the I Trust Sport Network. And we start doing activities, trying to involve in people from sports organizations. But we found too much conflict of interest between the sports officials and the government officials. So we start working from outside the sport system. This is how we start participating in, a, in think tanks, in a fundraising campaigns, in workshops, participating in the National Hubs Anti-Corruption. And now we are so happy to be with you here. So let me start with, the, with one question, which is uh, a great question for all of you. Please do not reply. Do not send me a reply as another question, but I am just going to start from a common ground. The first one thing I want to say is we recognize a great job you have been doing. This project will impact positively our audiences here in Latin America, especially in Colombia and in um, Panama. So let me start from a common ground. I think we agree with these next three statements. The first one is we find a gap, a huge one between the good intentions of a sports officials and governments. Some of them are doing a great efforts, but some of them are just messaging the message. So Transparency in the Sport was created to help to fill that gap between the good intentions of good governance and the real thing. The second one is we identified a huge need for real change, at least for better accountability and financial transparency in sport. The third one is we find the need from the sport system, even more from the athletes, to have a better balance of power. So what has been doing the sport movement and the, the sport system and the Olympic movement. So the first thing is the Olympic movement has been using common places to cheat trust in public. This has brilliantly described by the German journalist Jens Wendrich. The second one is the other, the great Declan Hill. He said that the Olympic movement and the international sports system has been losing credibility. The IOC and the ICSS, Qatari founded organization, will ignore systematically allegations of corruption in mega sports events, briberies, scandals, and compliance from international uh, agencies such as Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch. The third one is. Human rights in sport are gaining visibility and public interest. We think this will change the sport movement in the future. We see this as a trend, as a global trend. So we make a survey with our collaborators in Colombia and the Panama, and we ask some questions about activism, about the government's role, about the role of sports organizations, about the role that we should do, and finally, what challenges do we have? So let me start saying that being activist in Latin America 
is not a desirable task. I mean, being a social leader in Colombia is a thing, at least in Colombia, is a thing to life to that. Let me let me say just just one thing about that. Since 2016, over 400 human rights defenders has been killed in Colombia. What about activism in sport? Well, as Simon Gardiner says, this sport or, or at least new sports integrity industry in Colombia is on its first stage. Same thing in Latin America. We don't have projects like you have there in Europe. We don't have big funding for this kind of projects here. So we ask our collaborators five items. So let's check what do they think about activism and the roles we have to play for that. The first thing is we found three kind of uh, positions in the general replies. The first one is uh, optimistic replies. I mean, they say, yeah, activism is idealism plus action. The second one, they say, yes, activism is getting things done. And the third one is nothing to do. <laughs> this system is highly conflict, so we cannot change nothing. <laughs> I, I, I remember you that these questions were replied by people who collaborate with us in Pro Deportes Panama and Transparency in Sport. So let's see, what do they think activism is? Just a couple ideas about that. Five actions. The first one is activism means for them kicking out corruption from a sport, of course. Second one is to engage stakeholders action. The third one is the empowerment of active athletes because they, as I said at the beginning, they are the main stakeholders in the sports system. And the fourth one is to helping to improve surveillance to the sport structures that they take decisions. And the five one is uh, activism is improve accountability in uh, sports organizations. What about the government's role? We found so interesting six kind of replies. The first one is they say, yeah, the government should audit in public funding. This means more control, more transparency, more um, yeah, control to the public funds. The second one is more rules, more regulation. It is a kind of social thing that people think or at least believe that it is written in the law, this is going to, to happen and not always happen like that. The third one is a control mechanisms for sport officials that government should do that. This is uh, something like very common in the replies is no politicians in sports, no politics, at least not, not politicians inside. Another one is increasing education through guidelines, workshops and uh, principles of integrity and so on. And the last one, they say the government should support funding, not managing. The problem with this is, uh, uh, to, to do, do not say always, but most of the time, the public funding and the officials and governments overlapping functions with the sports organizations. But, uh, uh, even more when they win something, they are the first to take the picture in the stage. What about the sports organizations roles? They should establish at least uh, codes. This means internal control, like a top to down approach. The second one is uh, we found a kind of 
culture of anger, they say uh, they, they, they have uh, the agency problem, which is a culture of nepotism, low motivation. They say sport officials are motivated by self-interest, not by common ones. And the third one is compliance, promoting pl compliance mm -hmm. from inside, which means comply with rules, sanctioning, punishing, and uh, putting proper people in charge. So this means accountability, athletes involvement in decision making uh, roles. What about us? What about civil society? What did they reply? So they replied six items. Let me talk short about each one of those. The first is they say we should be and keeping independent. This means auditing, developing tools to do effective controls, um, following compliance. Some of them say we have to do criminal investigation to following compliance. Another say we have to audit public and private sports organizations as a civil society activist. The another one is to bring media involvement, red flagging nonsense. And, and last is that no role. We don't have nothing to do. The system is highly conflictive, corrupted, so we don't have a role. I repeat, this is some of the replies they say. So let's talk about challenges. What challenges do we face in front of getting things done? Six optimist challenges. The first is changing corrupted system, trying to establish a self-management resources balance. Another one is to try to find, to be, to have a financial transparency, no politicians in sports organizations, improve our accountability. And this is probably the most important thing, which is being neutral, <laughs> not do a biased work. What about the pessimist choices? Yeah, they say no will to change from a sports organization. There is a lacking of group of grouping culture. This we brings to the next slide. And so, yeah, we, what can we do to change, to do uh, what I say, a healthy activism without, without being at risk in Colombia and Panama? So the first one is keeping independent. This means having contracts without losing credibility. The second one, and for me, is the most important thing, is the human sustainability. This means we are facing a leadership crisis. It is so difficult, extremely difficult, to find people motivated. We don't want likes. We don't want retweets. We don't want shares. What we want is building communities and find opportunities for them. People engaged with sports governance in with positive change in sport. The third one is security. As I said at the beginning, being a social leader here and uh, bothering power, powerful people is not, is not something good to do. So we have to think in security also. The fourth one is trying to find a way of having international support far from Russia, from Qatar, China, and governments that are losing credibility and in, into the sport system. And the five is, um, is a funding. Funding is a real thing. This means start doing and more crowdfunding campaigns, memberships, building real communities, bringing the sports journalists, events, digital products, and so on. So to finish my lecture this uh, morning is our activities can be grouped in four main actions. 
The first one is monitoring. And monitoring what? Monitoring commitments, agreements, public statements. Monitoring the good intentions that are signed in public and promoted in a TV and social media. The second one is working in coalition within actors from outside the sport movement. Working with inside a sports organization is okay. We work when they call us to work with them. Indeed, we just finished to do the strategic plan for the Ecuadorian Federation of Table Tennis. But we have been founding a lot of conflicts between sports officials inside and with sports officials from government. The third one is education, doing things like today are we doing uh, with you guys is doing workshops, participating in academics, trying to publish in Spanish, in English, and so on. And the last one is advocacy, which means political incidents, trying to bring changes in regulation. And as I said, bringing into the sport system people and organizations who are not regularly inside the sport system. Just to finish my presentation, I just want to say, uh, keep the conversation alive, give us the chance to learn from and with you. So I appreciate a lot this chance you have, uh, you, you, you open today for us and I will be here to reply to reply your answers if you have some of them so thank you very much to the organizers european union for this opportunity